What's happening guys, today I'm going to be sharing with you 20 awesome Photoshop hacks to instantly improve your editing in Photoshop. So let's get started. What's happening guys, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com, home to editing, tutorials, camera gear reviews, tricks, and tips. If you're not into learning new stuff or cool websites, then just follow me on Instagram, at BurnWills, to see a little bit more of my work. Just a quick reminder before I get started, make sure to hit that like button if you enjoy what you see today, and also to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all of my new Photoshop tutorials. So the first thing that I'm gonna talk about is scaling with our brush. Now we all know that we can just grab our brush tool and we can just click on our little icon up here, and then we can just change the size via this little size slider right here. And as you see, as I increase the size, I have this brush here, and then I can make it a little bit larger, and then now my brush size is larger. But it seems a little bit annoying to have to go and click up here every time. Now some of you also might know that you can right click and do the same sort of box will come up but what if I want to do it a little bit faster than that. Now there are the bracket keys so I can press the inside bracket key to go down or I can go on the outside bracket key to go up and each time you hit the bracket key it goes up or down by 100 pixels but what if I told you there's another easier way to do this. So if you hold alt and control at the same time if you move your mouse horizontally it'll make the size of your brush larger or smaller depending on where you're moving it. Now still while holding alt and control if you slide your mouse vertically up or down you'll see that you'll make the hardness either softer or obviously more hard like this. So this way you can quickly and easily adjust the size and hardness of your brush without having to click anywhere. All you have to do is hold Alt and Control at the same time and then move horizontally and vertically to adjust things accordingly. This trick alone will dramatically improve the speed of how you can do things with the brush tool in Photoshop. So now the next thing of course is let's say we want to paint some sort of thing over uh, some sort of warm light over here in the corner of our image by the sun. Now of course we're going to want to do that on a new layer. This brings us into our next trick. So of course we can add a new layer just by clicking our new layer icon. Seems simple enough, but what if we want to avoid all of that clicking? So what we can do instead is we can hold Command or Control, Alt, Shift, and N. And then as you see here, it brings up a new layer right here for us. So now we didn't have to do any of the clicking. All we have to do is press Command, Alt, Shift, and N. And now we have a new layer that we can paint on to our heart's desire here. So now let's say let's say that we just want to pick a color here for our sunset. So I'm just going to go up to my color palette here. I'm just going to pick a nice orangey color at random. And of course I'm going to use that first trick that I just showed you guys. I'm going to scale up my brush here by holding Alt and Control. And I'm just going to paint on my new layer on the sun here. And I'm just going to change the blending mode to something random. Let's go overlay or something like that. So now I have this sort of orange haze coming in over the sky here. So now let's say this is a little bit too much for me. I want to change the opacity of this layer. So I've changed my blending mode and now I just want to change the opacity here. So of course usually I would just go click on my opacity slider and this little slider comes down and I can just drag this down to change the opacity of course. So this may seem easy enough but what if I want to do this a little bit faster. I don't want to have to drag this slider anymore. I want to do the least amount of clicking as possible. So what I can do here instead is with my layer one here selected or the layer that you want to change the opacity of, I can just go ahead and I can hit any of the numbers on my keyboard from one through zero and it's going to represent either each 10% all the way up to 100. So for example if I press one you'll notice that my opacity here sets to 10%. If I press press 2, you'll notice it sets to 20. If I press 6, you notice it sets to 60. Now if I want to go all the way back to 100, I can just go ahead and press 0. So as you see, all I have to do is just press the numbers on the top of my keyboard there, and then it will change the opacity for me really quickly and easily. So now the same thing applies to our brushes. So anything, any of our tools that have a transparency option. So for example, our brush tool has a transparency option here. As you see right up here, we have our opacity of our brush tool. Also, our dodge and burn tool also has an exposure level here, which is will also be affected by the same key. So if, again, if I press six, for example, it changed to 60%. If I press nine, it goes to 90%. Zero goes to 100%. You, you kind of get the idea. So with those numbers on the top of your keyboard, you can go ahead and you can change the opacity of your layers, but also the opacity of certain tools within Photoshop, like I just showed you with the brush tool. So just for the sake of example, let's just say I want two lines going down my image. I want one to be black and I want one to be white. So of course, as you see here, these two colors are obviously not black or white, and that's just because if I look down at my active color here, it's my active color is red and my background color is green. So that, of course, is what got painted onto my image. Now, 
I could go ahead and I can change these colors by just clicking on that box and then going ahead and changing the, the color to whatever I'm wanting or since I know that I just want to change this color to black or white I can just go ahead and I can press D on my keyboard and it automatically swaps those colors there for me to black and white now if I want to cycle through the two of them instead of having to click this little box here I can just go ahead and I can press X and then as you see it'll swap them really quickly and easily for me so then I don't have to click this little box all I have to do is just press X on my keyboard so that little trick with the swapping of colors you can actually do with any of the colors that you have it doesn't have to be black or white so for example here I just painted some red and now I want to quickly swap over to my white here so all I have to do is press X on my keyboard and as you see now I can paint with white really easily I didn't have to click anything down here all right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete this layer. And now let's talk about dodging and burning a little bit. So for those of you who don't know what dodge and burn is, it's just a tool that pretty much essentially lightens and darkens your image, but it's often something that you'll use when you're retouching a face or skin or whatever. So what you guys might already know, to use our dodge and burn tool, we have to be painting onto a layer. So as you, hear, as you see here, I just used my dodge tool and it lightened up her face a lot there. So if I just go ahead and I create a new layer, so I'm just gonna go ahead and use that shortcut again, Command Alt Shift N, if I try to use that same tool, nothing seems to happen, right? So if I just turn that on and off, you notice nothing is happening there. So with the dodge and burn tool, it has to be painted onto something, but it becomes an issue when we want to do something that is non-destructive. So non-destructive means that we're not making any permanent changes. Since we are actually painting on these effects onto, our, onto this layer here, it actually is becoming permanent in a sense. So that is sort of the opposite of what non-destructive editing is. So I'm gonna show you guys a different way of doing that. Use your dodge and burn tool, but then be able to put it on a new layer in a non-destructive way. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete these two layers. And so it's similar to the shortcut to create a new layer, but instead we want to bring up the dialog box for a new layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna press Command, Shift, and N. And then now as you see, a new layer box comes up. I'll just call this DB for dodge and burn. You can label it whatever you want. But next we're gonna change our mode here from normal down here to overlay. So now with that blending mode, Photoshop recommends, hey, do you want to fill this, do you want to fill this layer with overlay neutral color 50% gray? Heck yeah, you do. So I'm just gonna click that little checkbox and I'm gonna click okay. So now we have this new layer that's filled with 50% gray, but literally nothing is happening in our image. And that's just because our blending mode is set to overlay, so it's making that gray totally invisible. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make sure that my dodge tool is selected. Then I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna make sure that my exposure is not set to 100%. I'm gonna change it to something a little bit lighter. So I'm just gonna, once again, press one on my keyboard, make it to 10%. If you want, you can also go less or you can do in between numbers. So if I quickly press 05, it'll change it to 5% for me. So I'm just gonna stick right there. I'm gonna leave my range at mid-tones there. So now as you see, I can go ahead and I can start to dodge certain areas of this image but it's on a, its own layer and I'm not affecting anything permanently here so as you see if I just turn that on and off you can see that all of those adjustments that we just made with our dodge and burn tool is just on this neutral 50% gray layer. So now on the same topic of using our tools on our toolbar here, as many of you probably know, to get to a different tool, you have to click and then go to whatever tool is also in that sort of category. So say for example, I want my brush tool, but then I want one of these other tools. Then I'd have to click and then drag to one of these uh, different tools. So what if I want something a little bit easier? So now here's another cool trick that will sort of reduce all the clicking that you might have to do when editing in Photoshop. So for example here, I'm just gonna go right here to my spot healing brush tool. And as you see, my patch tool is right here, but just for example, I don't wanna have to click and drag over to it. So what I'm gonna do is since I know that my shortcut for my spot healing tool here is J, I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna press shift and J at the same time, and as you see, it cycles through all of those different tools in that category, I guess. So if I just hold Shift J, Shift J, all of a sudden I'm at my patch tool, and now I can go ahead and I can use my patch tool in whatever way I please. Now you can go ahead and you can do that with any of the other tools. So if I wanna change my dodge tool really quickly to my burn tool, I can just go ahead, I can press O, then I can just press Shift O, and then as you see, it'll just cycle through to the different tools within that category. So again, just holding shift, then pressing the according letter shortcut for each of those tools. Now, next thing is, let's just say I want to affect just the face of this watch here. So a tool that might be handy 
is perhaps my elliptical marquee tool. So I'm just holding and clicking there just so you guys can actually see what I'm clicking. So elliptical mar marquee tool is the one I'm going to be grabbing. So I'm just going to zoom in. And as you see, if I just go to make a circle around here, it becomes increasingly difficult to really place get the circle to perfectly match the watch. You're gonna be here for like an hour and then you're gonna be crying and banging your head against the wall because you can't get a perfect selection of this watch because the circle just never matches up for you. So I'm about to save you a whole bunch of time with this one. Super easy, but whether you're using the marquee tool or the elliptical marquee tool, if you just make a selection like this and then hold the space bar, you can now move that selection wherever you want. You don't have to, it doesn't scale it in any way, it just moves the whole selection. So for example here, I, since I want to select the faces as watch, I'm just going to match it up to a certain area, then I'm going to rescale it, and I'm going to just move it around until it all starts to fit a little bit better. So again, I'm just holding the space bar and sort of finding my way, fine tuning my way into a final sort of area. Perfect, so that's about the area that I wanted to select. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna add a curves adjustment layer here. And so now as you see, it just loads that selection right onto a layer mask for us. And now because of our marquee tool there, I can just go ahead and I can make any of the adjustments that I need really quickly and easily. Next up, the thing I'm going to show you guys is something that is super awesome if you are ever needing to make a couple different images have very similar adjustments or there's maybe a certain style of colors, scheme or exposures that you really like to have across all of your images. You can make a cool preset here in Photoshop with any of the layer adjustment tools. I grab my curves adjustment layer and I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to create a quick little preset. So I'm just going to make the highlights a little bit stronger. I'm going to add a little bit of a fade here something like this and then maybe I'll bring down the shadows a little so now I just have this sort of faded look but just turn that on and off and now I'm gonna try to add a little bit of blue just for this preset example here a little bit of blue and then a little bit of cyan in here so now as you see I've made this sort of faded bluish adjustment here so what if I want to apply this exact adjustment over on to any of my images in the future so what I can go ahead and do is I can just click these three little or four little lines here and I can go down here to save curves preset. So now this little box will come up. I'll just call this to faded blues and then I'm just going to go ahead and click save. So now as you see our preset has been changed to faded blues and if I go ahead and I can click on another image here. So here's another image I have opened. I'm going to go back over to my curves, click my curves adjustment layer. I'm going to go right here to my preset and change from default and then I can go down here to faded blues which is the one that we just made and as you see it has now applied that preset with those exact same adjustments onto this image for us. So now as you see we have two images with the exact same I guess edit on them. Now this might not actually be a preset that I would personally use in this example but this is how you can create a preset. I would definitely recommend to take the time to dial it in a little bit better than I just did right there. So now going back to my image here let's just say I have to I want to add a little bit of color onto our face here and I was going to paint that in but I'm going to have to zoom in and then I'll have to zoom out a whole bunch of times to add in that color. So Instead of having to keep zooming in and out, I'm just going to open up a new window so I can have one window zoomed in and one zoomed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go up here to window, over here to arrange, and then down here to new window for kalo1.psd, which is just this file here. So now as you see, I have the same photo opened up on another tab right over here. Everything is the exact same as you see. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to go up here to window, down here to arrange, and then to up vertical. So now as you see, I have two of the photos here. If I just select one of them, so in this case, I'm just gonna have this one selected right here. And I can now zoom in on this image here. And I can go ahead and I can do any adjustments to this photo. It will automatically do the same thing over on this image. So let me show you an example here. I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna create a new layer. Let's just add a little bit of orange or something to her skin here. And so I'm just gonna go here, grab my brush tool, and I'm gonna rescale to something that works better for me here and I'm just gonna paint in a little bit of orange and as you see as I paint in orange here it also does the same right here so I can see exactly what I'm doing but from zoomed out right in the window beside me so this is a super cool way to sort of save your time for zooming in and out in and out in and out now just remember here I can go ahead and I can just press 
the numbers on my keyboard to change the opacity of that brush here. So I just want it nice and soft. I'm going to go down to 10% and just clicking one on my keyboard. Now as you see, it's set to 10% and we're just on this layer here. And if I just turn that on and off, you can see the slight difference that we made, but we have, we're able to look at it really zoomed in and zoomed out on two different projects sharing the same layers so that is a super super awesome way to save your time zooming in and out and in and out all day long while you do the really fine adjustments in your image so now I'm just gonna want to change this view back to my normal view so I'm just gonna go back to window over here to arrange and then back here to consolidate to all tabs so now everything will have its own tab again I'm just gonna exit out of my Kayla project here so now I have it just on one window once again and as you see I have a whole bunch of layers here and let's just say I'm now kind of done with all the adjustments that I want to make and I just want to bring it all together and merge it onto one layer really easily so what I'm gonna do is a super easy shortcut to doing this all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna shift click all of my layers then I'm gonna press command or control alt shift and E and now as you see here, it has duplicated and merged all of these adjustments and put them onto one layer for us. This is a technique that I always use sort of near the end of my images when I'm wanting to just bring everything together, merge it into one photo, and then I can work with just one photo instead of a whole bunch of layers. And all you have to do is just a simple little shortcut to merge all of those layers into one photo. All right guys, so that's pretty much all of the shortcuts and hacks that I have for today. Now, as you might have noticed, that was only 13 tricks and I did promise you 20. You can go and find the blog post with the remaining seven hacks over in bewellcreative.com. You can find that link down in the description below of this video. Anyways guys, I hope you learned something from these tricks and you have a lot of fun putting them to use. If you did learn something from this video, I would love if you hit that like button and maybe even consider subscribing to stay up to date on all of my latest Photoshop tutorials. Whether you've been subscribed to me for a while now or you're new to my channel i always love to see the work that all of my subscribers make so make sure to tag me on instagram at burnwills so then i can make sure to see your work and check you out and all that cool stuff my name is brendan from bewillcreative.com and i hope to see you back here next time for another new photoshop tutorial see you then